everyone. Welcome to Sunset Peony, to my channel on YouTube here. And today, to catch your attention, hopefully, to um, paint this uh, fall brown mushroom. The inspiration from this is actually uh, from old book, ancient books in the library that I always, I told you guys that I always like to go and check them out. And I saw this mushroom and I say, you know, we can make it simple enough that, you know, everyone can have fun. And I love this, like the the part where the snail or whatever had taken a, a bite out of it. And this ancient um, uh, painter is from the 1800. And of course I changed around and, uh, you know, put some of my stuff you know, over here and the four leaf background down here because I just wanted to do a four leaf background here. And so I hope you guys uh, like it. A drawing of this, uh, the outline anyway, will be provided uh, in sunsetpeony.com. Uh, that's my blog where you on this post, go find this post, uh, probably called Fall Brown Mushroom. And uh, and uh, a drawing will be there so it'd be easier for you guys, you know, to uh, just get started right away, okay? And uh, also, what uh, we use quite a bit of color. You, we use a lot of green, we use a lot of uh, fall color, and then uh, some burnt umber, and all the paints that I will use is also on my blog um, post. I will have a list of uh, the color that I use. Hopefully, I'll remember all of them. I keep just grabbing color and putting them in here, right? And, uh, I, uh, um, and also, I have a product list will uh, link you to Amazon. I think it must be Amazon. It must be Daniel Smith's store on Amazon where you can get some of these. And uh, of course, the uh, the perline green that I absolutely love so much is from Schmenka. Schmenka also, I, I think I have a link. I will go check, okay? Because this is, this make up my uh, green palette, right? And so, uh, and so, um, Let's see. Yeah. So if you guys uh, wanted to uh, leave a comment and say hi, you know, after I finish, you know, we finished the whole thing with you guys this time. And then I, I, all I added is that's just the, this little um, leaf over here. Maybe I go in and reinforce that darkness over there a little bit. Well, really nothing much. You know, if you allow me, I'll just sit there and pick on the painting forever. Right. And so I have decided that I don't want to do that. And so um, we will, uh, you can uh, just follow everything uh, in here. All the information should be available to you and I should sign this. Uh, I should sign my painting. And uh, so I don't think that there's anything else. I just would like um, you guys to subscribe to me and um, because that is fun for me to really get a, a, you know, a reinforcement of how much you uh, enjoy my painting. And, um, and say hi to me, that is uh, even happier. And I have gotten a lot of people saying hi to me. You guys come from everywhere and I just love to hear about you and how, how you like painting, beginner, it doesn't really matter. We just, you know, here refine some of our technique and as we go, we all get better together, right? And so let's uh, just get together and have fun and uh, hopefully you have the basic material. I also, I, I think I also had linked something to this paper right here. Um, I also have Archer's watercolor paper, and this is uh, the Stonehenge. But I, did, I I realized that since I sell these painting, um, when I scan them, the Stonehenge doesn't, uh, the texture of the paper <laughs> does not come up. <laughs> and uh, uh, like Archer's, it's just like uh, pure white. So I really, really like that. And so that's why I use that. And I find that with our technique, this Stonehenge can actually handle uh, handle uh, a lot of watercolor, even watercolor wash, you know, very much. And so, um, hope you guys have fun, okay? We'll just stop talking so much and just uh, let you guys get your material together. You know, make sure you go look at the blog and maybe watch this a little bit first and uh, so that you will have an idea what to expect. But always remember, you can always turn up the light to brighter. You can always uh, stop the, stop the, uh, you know, your video and just uh, let yourself have a chance to catch up, take your time. Uh, you don't have to paint as fast as me because I'm I'm constrained by time. I always say that, but not you. You can take your time. You can take your speed, you can take your pace. And so that um, it will be more uh, relaxing because if you, you know, nobody is a police. We don't have to go as fast as anybody, you know, right? And just look, uh, do it at, at your own pace and just be happy and uh, do lots of painting, okay? Let's get started. Okay, we will get started. Now, um, 
you know, I should put a link of this eraser. I don't know if I do in my um, in my blog, in my product list. So I always do that, you know, just uh, as soon as I want to start painting, I can see, oh, the pencil lines are a little bit, uh, you know, too fake or harsh. You know, actually the pen pencil that I use is this uh, Zero Free Pentel. I also will try to link it then and see if um, you guys are interested in, you know, getting something that's very, very thin. Even very, very thin is a little too, you know, thick for me. And just so that's just my habit. And I would like to come and dab it, you know, just as long as I can see the line, I'm fine. But this drawing will be provided um, on my blog post, right? Just like usual. So just scroll down, find this mushroom blog post, and then go and fetch it. And you can uh, use the line drawing, okay? Now, what I'm going to start first is use this zero brush because this is like, you, you can see that the brush can cover this area, right? And for this area, I want it to be kind of yellow ochre uh, plus a little bit of, um, you know, but don't go mix up. Just pull some yellow ochre from your, um, you know, wherever you put your yellow ochre, you can put it like uh, maybe it's from your palette and, you know, because yellow usually will make things a little bit brighter. Now, the reason why I use the yellow ochre is because um, when I was practicing, um, I just like put the pigment down here, right? A very, very light, um, a very, very light uh, uh, a shade, a value of the pigment. Yellow ochre is good because yellow ochre has, um, what does it have in there? It has, uh, okay, come over here. I can't erase too much of my pencil mark and then forget where the line is. And uh, it has some black in it. And so, it is very very good because it's um this is kind of my goal is like a fall kind of fallish kind of painting and so things could be a little bit of like a decay and a little bit of um you know a lighter color okay and we'll get that uh, now when um uh, when I was practicing I actually tried to use a different color and I like this better and uh, this brush is actually better because I was using a little bit too much. Um, of the you know when I was using this brush when I was practicing and so this area was a little too wet and when I painted the mushroom um, cap and it actually um, was leaking so I'm really hoping that you know this will dry you know I'm kind of slightly dapping it this will dry fast um, that was not like really anything that create a heartache okay now I'm going to use the flow brush you know any kind of uh, medium size and go into my burn umber Okay, so I'm going to start with Burn Umber first, okay? And then I'm going to just stay away from this wet area, right? And just uh, just be careful at this point, okay? And then I'm going to start push at, uh, doing this cap. I could start doing this cap. Now you can see that there's a bite taken out of it by a snail or something, right? And we're going we're gonna to go through that together with you, okay? So that we can, you know, see the process of doing something like that. Okay, so burn umber. Now I always have next to my burn umber a little uh, bit of um, uh, lamp black because you know um, when I sometimes you know I know that at times when I want the when I want the burn umber to be really really intense, just um, you know as much as as the watercolor you know be careful about this curve right here okay as much as the watercolor can provide it wasn't like really quite enough okay so i always put a little bit of uh you know uh, lamp black right next to my burn umber so that i could you know just use the tip and dip a little bit into the blacks so that i can make this more intense um you know uh you know, uh, we're, we're painting this, you know, as you can see, right? It's a brown mushroom, but, um, and so, you know, having a little bit of black there is, uh, you know, follow the stem line right here, okay? Uh, it's uh, kind of nice, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this part um, uh, without, I uh, clean the brush, okay? And then I'm going to pull this color out from there. So this part uh, right here is a little bit lighter, okay? And that will help us see the form instead of a flat color it can be you know the form will be a little bit better and can, you can see me right away i'm going to show you um yeah this is uh, something that the the snail also take a bite over here so we're going to leave a little bit 
you know, and try not to have a, have a outline, outline that, okay? And so now I'm going back into the burnt umber with my clean brush and take as much, you know, pigment as you can, as, uh, as the burnt umber will give you without diluting it and mixing it. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the, the burnt umber with a little bit of uh, lamp black, just use the tip of the brush after you pick up the burnt umber and dip it into the lamp black, okay? So you can see that I'm trying to make this area more intense, the color, okay? While this is still wet and this area, I wanted to leave it kind of like that. If that's not intense enough, we can always add some more even after it's dry, okay? And but over here, we want it, we want it dark, okay? So like, so let's just do so, okay? Dip some more and make sure we maintain the curve over there. And, uh, you know, so this is quite nice, you know, um, as you can see, but uh, we always know that, okay? As we always know that, as soon as um, watercolor dry, then the color is less intense, okay? Because it dried up, you know, less intense. And so we want it to be able to make sure that we can be heavy handed with um, something like that it seems like you guys always like mushroom i like mushroom too and the you know what i'm thinking is like you know i wanted to the foliage all change here now in utah and um well except the aspen hasn't changed to yellow but all the maple uh, have the brilliant crimson and brown and orange color so it's really really fun to now uh i before i go on describing the weather <laughs> i wanted to tell you that over here i would like to have this part also a little bit darker okay because it's curving down right so um if you can paint that part a little bit darker then it will um you know make the curve you know make the the mushroom look like a a cap right a round cap instead of a, a flat shape okay so i'm gonna intensify it a little bit over there and use some of the lamp black mix with the umber and make that make it that way okay and so i'm quite happy with this and i don't want to touch it anymore because that's just the way i do things you know i kind of wanted it to you know have the time to dry and hope this is dry it feels dry and so i shouldn't should not be afraid because of what happened okay same brush and i'm doing the same thing as over here but not over there okay yeah so i went on a hike with my husband and that's uh you know fall is the best time to go on hike okay and now this, uh, we are trying to take uh, special care to leave that area white dish, white dish kind of right now, okay? Because that's where the, you can see that from the picture in your, in your upper right, right? This is where the, the snail, let's just call the snail. We didn't know who came in and take a big bite out of the mushroom, but let's, let's just say that it's the snail, we'll blame, we'll blame the snail, okay? And so, you know, inspiration, you know, our surrounding is, you know, inspire us to do, you know, we do one section at a time. This we can soften because it's burnt umber. Burnt umber is not a color that if you leave a line there, it will be there forever. And so um, you can actually soften it. So we're gonna, you know, try to do a section at a time. So, you know, you, uh, we don't uh, get flustered. Okay, and uh, I very use the tip of the brush and just kind of here and there, you know, do that line, okay? So that, you know, the people know that the mushroom cat kind of go, you know, to all the way to the back, okay? And keep on just using uh, burnt umber. This color really is worth buying, burnt umber and sepia and all those nice color because, um, you know, the professional people like Daniel Smith or uh, Sminker and all the watercolor maker, they always do the burn umber really, really good. Well, you know, um, and so we want we wanted some, you know. So this is like kind of like a thicker uh, or more dense, you know, because it's mushroom, um, and so it is not in the fall yet. No, it's not in the winter yet, because um, you know I. You know, I always told you guys that I go, I like to go to the library, right? Library, inspiration, just really, really fun. And, you know, what I do there is I will, you know, go and you can see that, right? I'm approaching this area with the harsh line and my brush can just kind of scrub it out. 
the hash line is kind of gone, you know. Okay, and this is still wet. And while it's wet, I always wanted to keep dropping, you know, the kind of darkish black color, uh, the lamb black color. Okay, also mine is from Daniel Smith. You know, and if you are wondering about all these color, um, you know, I always mention it in my blog post, but I also have a have a Amazon link that you guys can go if you want to, and uh, and uh, you know because it's, it's just easier to link it on Amazon. And I think Daniel Smith has a shop in Amazon, you know, a shop front, and so, okay, now let's uh, keep going over here, okay, with a burn number, and do the top of the cap. Okay, and we will, we will, we will need to come back and, uh, you know, for area that we want it to be even darker, like I just said uh, a little while ago. And uh, when watercolor paint dry, so you know that this to me, you know, because of my experience, I can say, okay, this is not going to be good enough for, you know, the black enough of the mushroom cap. Okay. And, um, and so I'm, you know, I'm adding color as I go and I absolutely love this little area. So, you know, it might look like it is, uh, you know, the color is not like altogether smooth, but we don't want that. At least, um, I think that, you know, uh, okay, I'll tell you the inspiration in a minute. I don't want that because I want the mushroom to, you know, have variation, okay? Uh, so it looks like a, a mushroom that's been sitting there for a while and is kind of on, on its way to decay, but it's still beautiful, so we're going to paint it. Now, this um, mushroom, uh, the inspiration come from uh, 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 an artist that is, uh, you know, so keep getting your burn umber, okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing as over here. I'm going to leave some area that is lighter in color over here, okay? So it will get the form is dark and light, so it, make, it makes the curve form for us, okay? So I'm going to go in with a clean brush, okay? And right now, and pull this color out. And uh, so the inspiration is, um, I like to go to the library you know, and our library has a lot of uh, really, really nice books, right? And I, uh, and uh, once upon a time, I just go and just look, I browse, I, you know, and I find mushroom, I find a section of mushroom books, and uh, it's, it's very ancient books. You know, some of them, the oh, so dusty, you know. <laughs> but I have to, you know, I know that I have to put up with the dust, right? Just to get to the good books, and, uh, the artist is in the 1800 and so they you know mushroom i guess is a very easy subject for them because um they can just you know it's not moving right like as for a bird it's a little bit hard you know for them to remember how the bird looked like in flight you know at that point there's no camera and so i'm putting a little bit of lamp black over here just to darken the surrounding okay here and there and leaving the you know leaving the um leaving the brown too okay and then i can at this point i can also because it's still wet i can also drop in some just pure per number now at the very end i'm going to come in with red because that just will brighten up the mushroom and uh, if i forget then you guys know that that's my intention and you go ahead and do that okay and sometimes you know with teaching you know there's so many things in your mind and so uh, from my 1800 painting i absolutely love the oh this is nice you know so it's it's getting sufficient dark over here for me so we might not need to uh, come back and add more dark but then you know okay I kind of wanted to add a little bit more the burnt umber but lightly over this area okay and then we'll come in with some red at the end you can use a strict red or you can red I mean uh, burn um, Okay, let me see. Uh, like, okay, this is my dish, right? I am, uh, I just wanted you guys to know that that's how my colors are. And so what I will do, I have a little bit of red next to my quinacridone burn orange, okay? So I might just take some color and drop it there when it's dry. Not right now, because when right now, if I do that, then it will be too wet. Okay, so let's leave this little bite out for now, okay? Except what I want to do is go into my, with my little, um, and get a, Deep burn umber. Maybe you can do a tap of uh, do a tap of the uh, lamp black, okay, 
Or you can use uh, sepia mixed with burnt umber is also good, but you know the black is doing so well. So I'm going to do a little bit of outline here, okay, because it's necessary. And I would get, I go to the library and get inspiration, okay? I, I'm pulling the color out because I don't want this area to be absolutely white, okay? So just pull a little bit and make it a little bit brown, browner, okay? Just like that, or you can, you know, you can just pick up a little bit of sepia and drop it in here. Not necessary at this point, okay? We're gonna come back in a minute, promise, promise, okay? And so I'm going to let this, because this two area, this had a lot of water here. And this area is uh, kind of dry, and I'm going to put a nice uh, green, green sepia color over here. I just want it to be very, very pretty. And so what I would do, let's come here and do this stem over here, okay? Now, um, you know, we're going to do this black mushroom because that's the focal uh, black mushroom. This brown mushroom, that's the focal point, and this is the, you know, the second supporting it, and then all the other will be kind of whitish. Okay, let's do the whitish one first, okay? before we go back over there, because that then that will help us see the contrast and we will see that, oh, is that enough? Okay, so I'm going to use, um, you know, oh, okay, I can use this one, you know, because uh, it's like this, this color down here is not as, uh, as intense, okay? So what I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so a, a light, light, light color of the burnt umber, okay, over here, just a very, very light color. You know, just about the cap area and this area that is probably in the dark, right? And then we're going to come in with a clean brush and just do my details, you know, and pull the color out. Just pull the color out, okay? And that's about it. Now, if you say, ah, oh, we want the mushroom to kind of have waves on the cap, right? Then what we will do is we will kind of drop a little bit of, uh, a little bit of darker right now, okay, while, while it is still kind of wet, okay, and that should be enough, because it's not the focal point, and we're just gonna, you know, not let that take away from that, right, and so what I'm doing is I'm learning from these masters that are 1800, you know, very, very ancient master, and uh, I'm looking at what they're doing, and uh, try to replicate it ourselves, okay, but of course, I don't, you know, I don't like to copycat people, okay? I, um, so I'm just kind of scrubbing the color out over here, okay? And we're going to uh, do the stem, okay? So I kind of like to use um, my little sepia color. You know, the stem is very easy. Um, what we're going to do is have this part darker because all the part over this way is lighter, okay? And then I'm going to just kind of put strokes, vertical strokes on, okay? But then as soon as I put in the color, I'm going to kind of soften it right away. Okay, and I say, ah, maybe I didn't have enough vertical stroke. Then I can come in and stroke it some more. Okay, and this is uh, where the stem is. So I'm going to just go in there and put a little bit more definition over there, okay? But very, very light touch, okay? And over here, there still need to be color, but very, very gentle, okay? So the stem is actually quite easy for us to paint, you know, just put some color in and then bring it out. And this area, just let it be ambiguous because what I'm going to do is I'm going to f try some fall color down there. Okay, just uh, when when we get to it, try some fall color down there and make some fallen leaves, okay? And so not a very detailed fallen leaf. This will be kind of, uh, you know, you know that it's there. And uh, okay, let's, uh, let's do the stem part of this area, okay? Since we have our hand on the, the sepia with a little bit of yellow ochre. Um, okay, so that is this, uh, that's the side of the stem. That's the end of the cap over here. Okay, we want it to, you know, if you want it to do the outline like what I do, and that's fine, okay? So that you won't get confused, you know, over here and make a mistake. And then, so we are going to just have the stem like that with the little bit of pigment, right? You can see that the pigment is very light. And now I'm pulling this color out. You know, pulling this color out. Okay, so it might sound uh, look very, very light to you, but um, uh, you can adjust, right? Because you're not looking at a camera when you're at home. Okay, and this one, I need to have some vertical stripe. Now, maybe when we're 
doing the first layer and the vertical stripe kind of disappear, you know, then don't worry about it. Just at the end, use a very uh, soft, uh, use a very soft, uh, a small brush like the zero brush and go in there and add back, add the little, you know, line that you want back in, okay? The effect that you want to achieve is like, oh, it's there, but it's not really there. You can't see the stripe, but you can kind of see the stripe. <laughs> that makes sense, right? You know, so you can kind of see it, but then it's not quite uh, that, uh, you know, it's not like a zebra or, you know, a horizontal line of some kind, you know, it's there, but you, you know, you just want it so gentle and so subtle. Okay, and that's what we're trying to accomplish. All right, and so let's just, uh, you know, kind of finish this part over here. We need to have color, but not a lot, okay? And um, over here, we might want to come back and put some little green fern that's growing in between just to separate the color over there, okay? Now, um, I don't, I don't know if that's okay. Let's uh, work in this very, very tiny little area. I'm using this, this uh, old brush that I uh, have a stiff edge over there. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into pink gray and put just a little dab of indigo. Okay, and come over here now because burnt umber is a color that um, it doesn't stay. If you scrub it, it will come out. So be very, very careful when you are doing. Um, you know, right next to it, what I'm doing, okay? I'd be very, very careful, or the burn number will just try, if you disturb that too much, it will just come down on you and try to mix it, mix the color on the page, but that will be okay too. Okay, so you can see that that area is very, very dark, right? Over there, and let's do a little bit of this area. <sighs> yeah, this area a little bit dark too, okay? The same thing, uh, use your brush and go get some paints gray color mix it with a little bit of um how about coming from over here to over here and make it a little bit darker so that the viewer can see that it's it's turning to the back and kind of going dark okay okay so this won't be there won't be a line well there will be actually there will be a line for the for the stems, okay? So we're gonna make sure we leave room for that. So it's going up there. Okay, now this is not a bite. This is actually a highlight, okay? So let's uh, let's um, use the very, very uh, little zero brush and um, use the burn umber, I guess, back to the burn umber color and come over here and uh, kind of using this to draw an area with a bite. Okay, kind of like this, you know, but this time the snail decided to take a bite from down here. Okay? Now, we're gonna just, um, why don't we just work on this bite, okay? We're gonna pull the adjacent color with a clean brush into here. Okay? Just like what I did over here, okay? But you don't have a little bit of sharp line over there, it's good, okay? So, let's, I think this area is dry. So, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use some sepia color. Sepia is like a dark brown that doesn't have red. At least that's the way I feel about it, okay? And we're gonna do some divot, okay? So now you watch me, okay? You can see that I'm painting a line of sepia over here, okay? And straight away, I'll go clean the brush and then pull this color out. Pull this side, not that side, on the, on the right side, okay? Pull that out, okay? So isn't that fun? So it looked like there's a a dip in there from the bite of the snail. I am going to, you know, eventually paint a snail because I think painting snail is really fun too with you guys, okay? But I knew that if I were to do the mushroom or do a ladybug or do a snail, it's going to, you know, pu push the video to two hours. <sighs> and so I don't do that, okay? I, uh, but I will do a separate, okay? So now I'm just putting line in there randomly. 
you know, and then go in and soften it so it looked like uh, look like shadows, okay? So doesn't that look like a bite is taken out? And so I'm just going to be happy and just leave it that way, okay? So it because it looked like it for me, okay? And so there's going to be a bite right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is uh, from over here, I'm going to use some uh, yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of the um, uh, pink, uh, no, uh, sepia and then line up this area over here okay so it looked like the snail had come over here and taken a bite uh, like I say you know I don't want to give all the credit to myself I am absolutely delighted with um, how the you know the ancient um, 1800 people you know do their painting right and so I say oh let's just use this one because his copyright definitely is gone and so um, we are, you know, so you, you can see that I use sepia and leave a little bit of the white area because that's what the the ancient artists decide to do that, okay? And then have some vertical stroke coming down here. Oh, it's like, it looks so real. I just really, really admire those uh, ancient painters. And since if you have been painting with me for a while, um, you know, I'm just taking a clean brush and soften this area, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some green. Okay, let's just use our green mix. I'll show you. Okay, some just uh, pick up some of these color here, random color, you know, and that's all I'm going to use. And just drop that in there. Oh, so nice, you know. Um, they are just, you know, uh, just... Um, oh, okay, I was just halfway telling you, if you guys are new, you know, uh, well, painting with me, you know that uh, most of the learning that I have done. Look, doesn't that look like a bite has been taken out? Okay, maybe it doesn't look like that to you. So you, let's use this um, this number two that I get from Jackson. But any kind of synthetic brush that's kind of hard, you know, will do, okay? So we're gonna, you know, turn this into a greenish, mossy, mossy color, okay? Maybe when the mushroom was first opened up, it was more white, but then after a little while, they will become Especially when it get closer to the fall, they will become a little mossy. So what we're gonna do is like use you can use a green gold, but any kind of sap green. You probably have sap green and dip that in sepia. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this whole area into kind of mossy green, okay? Mossy green with shadow, and you'll see how I'm gonna do that, okay? But this is the layer with the mossy green, okay? So we put that. You know, so uh, I will repeat it one more time. You know, just use any kind of sap green, uh, sap green color, and then put that with a little bit of sepia color, okay? And then a clean brush and pull this color out because the color is quite intense. And then we work, as we're working this, we'll pull the color over here too, okay? There need to be a line because that's what the way the mushroom is. Okay, so I'm, I'm pulling the color out. It's probably not going to be enough, but I will just uh, deal with that so far, okay? And then you will see how I work that, you know, and kind of make it more... <laughs> uh, okay, let's do this part right here. Oh, that wasn't enough, but see the problem with synthetic uh, brush uh, versus... Um, uh, because they don't really like to pick up as much color. But, you know, with any kind of brush, you just get used to the brush. And as you get used to the brush, then you will see how you need to, what you need to do to work with it, right? And get some of that mossy color over here, okay? Over there. And don't worry about, you know, anything. Just kind of use this. You can even hear me, right? The brush is quite dry. Now clean it and kind of pull this color out, okay? Out down over here, okay? And now. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Um, you know, you work with the brush that you have, that you can get your hands on, uh, that your is within your budget, and then, uh, you know, get used to it. And that's why, you know, the brush that I, that I use, uh, you know, they're not really expensive. They're from the Oriental Art Supply place, and so you, you can um, also... Uh, just go and do that and, and look at my blog. There's a product I use link in there, okay? So it's just a way to facilitate you and help you with um, getting uh, some supply that are not like too expensive, okay? And I am 
you know, I can't. I, I'm not a professional, really, because I, I don't know what, what does it take to be a professional. Someone can tell me, and because uh, uh, like I was just beginning to tell you, I, I learn from all artists, you know, and so I would just go to the library and sit there, and then I would just walk,、uh, read books, and go through, you know, artist painting, and then and then I will be there for a few hours, immerse myself, and say, how do they do this? How do they do that? And that's you know、uh, how I learn. And so the way I learn is very conducive to、um, beginners because you know I、uh, you know I learn it just by myself. So I share it with you so it will be easy. Okay. So I'm putting some of that green mossy color over here to make it consistent with this area, right? Okay. Um. Let me see. Okay, so right now I'll just let that dry a little bit because that wasn't like a lot of pigment. So what I can do is come in here with that pink spray and indigo mix and darken that, darken that area underneath the, underneath the、um, the mushroom cap. Okay, you can see that, right? Okay, darken that area so that as to you when you when I'm done and you look at it and you you can just like see it because you need to portray the cap effect of the mushroom and so that's you know so you need to have more intense color over here and I'm pulling that color out and this area also need to be a little darker so I'm going in and picking up more pigment but not as dark as just like this tip right here okay try to make that the darkest and then. You know this area need to be kind of dark too, okay? Okay. Wow, isn't that fun? You know, it's just kind of like the mushroom just appear in front of your eyes, okay? And so I hope you guys like you know what I do because、um, that's the way I learn it, and I like I just said that it's very、uh, conducive to beginner because you know I. I go in. I say, now how do they? How do this guy that live in eighteen hundred do this? Okay, and then I'll just kind of follow, follow, follow him, and I will figure it out, and then I will go and get people that I love, like my husband, and to tell me, James, you know, what do you think? You know, do I copy it nicely? And、uh, and then he'll tell me, you know, my husband is、um, very he his mom. Expose him to art a lot when he was young. Okay, the same paint gray mixed with、um, indigo. Okay, just to get that a little bit darker and a little bit darker over here. And so I, you know, I spend a lot of my life, you know, doing things like that and get that a little darker. And、uh, because I just like that, I, you know, that's just the way I am. And I now with the same brush, okay, because I'm lazy, I don't think about it much. You know, go to some of the, the brown color. But it, now, if you have a puddle over here, I know that, I know what I've done, right? I don't have a puddle. But if you do, then do not、uh, do that now, okay? Wait until it's totally dry. Like I、uh, tell you guys, right? If you live in Singapore, you live in Hong Kong. You know your things don't dry as fast as me here in Utah. Okay, so adjust it to your own. Look, can you see the mushroom? Like、um, it's、uh, just coming to life. You know, for you guys, right? Now I'm going to just use some paint spray because the mushroom cap ha would have cast a shadow over here. Okay, and so this right now what I'm painting is a cast shadow on the stem. Okay, and so it might have some kind of a harsh line over here, and that's fine. Okay, and if you just remember to do your shadow, and then you'll be fine. Now, while I have、uh, no, let's get the soft brush here, the the zero brush. Okay, because remember I told you I'm gonna put some red. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I just show you. Okay, how I pick up color. I'm gonna like pick up this little bit of red, a little bit of conical burn orange. Okay, just like they are quite dry, right? But I know that there's pigment here, and then I'm just gonna put it here. Okay. Now be very very careful because the you know I can tell that the、um, the burn umber wanted to move, and so in order to not let it move on me, then I I have to be just you know barely touching the page if I can. You know, explain it. You know, barely touching the page. Okay. Now, 
this a little harsh, the line, so I do even very, very light touch, okay? So I won't disturb the burn number and kind of get the red color to spread a little bit around, okay? Without lifting up the burn number, okay? Now, that makes the mushroom just look so much, uh, what do you call that? So much happier because it's not just brown, it has red on it. Isn't that fun? And you can actually leave it a little bit drier before you do that. And let's do some for over here too. Over here, just a minute. What I mean is over this little second. The supporting mushroom, okay? Let's like just put some red. And just very, very light touch, okay? Very, very light on your hand so that you don't disturb the bottom layer. It's very, very hard to rescue if you, leave, if you um, do the bottom layer, uh, disturb the bottom layer. Now, so this look more orange than that, and so, and so I'm going to tell myself, you know, I really like that kind of orangey color, so I'm going to put a little bit back over here so they're consistent, right? A little bit of orangey color over here. Okay, ah, isn't that fun? Okay, just a light touch, a clean brush, okay, just kind of soften it, but make sure that the clean brush is quite dry, okay? when you come back and soften it so as to not lift it. But I'm really, really happy with this, so I won't mess with that anymore. Okay, so you can see there's a little bite out of here, a little bite out of there, and we're gonna do this little bite, okay? See here? You know, uh, put a stripe on here, okay? Put a stripe on there and kind of soften it. Kind of soften that color, okay? And so that kind of look like a bite is taken out of that one too. <laughs> and then we're gonna put the shadowy area underneath the cap, okay? Underneath the cap, right here, okay? The shadowy kind of bluish gray color, okay? Well, that artist in the 1800 decided that he wanted to do that, so we'll just follow him. But we change up a little bit, right? Because we are our own boss. Okay, and I'm going to use uh, some uh, burnt umber and just kind of darken the the edge of this cap area a little bit, okay? Just darken it a little bit. Use some line here and there, okay? So that it will make the effect of a mushroom kind of curving into itself, okay? This part doesn't need to. I can do a little bit over here, maybe just a little bit, okay, just for fun. Now, I, I have to constrain myself to sometime I just like, you know, I just like let myself, you know, pick on the detail a little bit too much. And when I do that, then, you know, one is I make the video too long and second, now I'm softening it with a clean brush, okay? So it's not such a harsh line. Okay, isn't that fun? Look like it's curving, maybe a little bit more. Like, <laughs> I told you I don't like to, you know, get too much on the detail. You know, the detail is what we would do at the very end when you have time and you really want to do it, okay? And uh, so I'm, oh yes, and so I'm you going back to this brush, okay? Going to, uh, let me push the video recording just a second. What I'm doing is I use, I need a stiff brush and I'm going to kind of dry dab the green, the green, uh, the green mix with the, as uh, uh, with the sepia and, uh, do that, do a layer of here over a layer of that kind of dry brush, you're dapping it over here because that's what that artist did at 1800, okay? So I'm going to do that. Library is always, always very fun because it has just so much inspiration, right? Um, you know, I, I went to a, um, a, some person in my area, uh, her house is like huge and really beautiful and one of the um, I guess they must be, I know that they're very well off financially. One of the things they like to do is they like to buy um, original oil painting. And so it's a feast to my eye. It's like going into a museum, right? And so I, um, you know, have one of the daughter-in-law take me around and go see all the painting. There are a lot of artists that are not as, uh, oh, that might be a little bit too much. Seep, uh, sepia instead of green, okay? So I don't like that. And so I'm just dotting this out and just give you the illusion of uh, that is uh, 
you know, moldiness, mossiness to it, okay? And then kind of soften it. And I'm leaving a little bit of white over there, okay? And then I'm going to go into the burn umber. No, no, yeah, the, no, actually the blue. The blue mixed with pinks gray. And I'm going to intensify this area right here a little bit. So there's a separation, okay? Doesn't that look so much better? And so I'm actually quite happy with this and then with that too. And this is fine over here. And so I'm going to uh, work a little bit on the stem, okay? So now this supporting row um, of, uh, of uh, this uh, cute little mushroom, we don't have to worry about it too much, okay? But we do have to paint it still, but just, you know, uh, use more loose uh, watercolor to deal with that, okay? So that it's not, uh, we don't spend a lot of time, you know, putting on details of, um, of the supporting mushroom, if that makes sense at all. Okay, just pull it down a little bit. You can dab a little bit of that green on here too. You know, that, and that will just make things more consistent. And so, you know, I uh, they, they buy uh, original painting, but not from, of course, yeah, I mean, you know, we can't get painting from Van Gogh, uh, even with very rich people's budget, you know, and so, but there are so many, so many really awesome artists that, uh, that, uh, what is the word for it, okay? So um, I'm going to put a little bit of a mushroom over here too, okay? So just a little, like, very, very light wash, just like right there. Um, mushroom cap, there's a lot of very, very, uh, very good artists that are never famous. I don't, I don't really know what it takes to make someone famous, you know? Um, maybe the willingness to go out and, you know, romance the client, you know, I don't know. And so, um, you know, in the library, that's what you will get when you go to the library. You will find um, a lot of artists that, uh, you know, in books, right? <laughs> library is so awesome. Without the library, how do we, how do we get to see things like that? You know, artists that are uh, not like really really famous but their stuff is just very very fun to 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 see you know and so i uh i love the library and so as you know it's it, you know i really uh, fight tooth and nail when people uh, sell when libraries sell their books you know because if once in a while you get someone who likes to clean out stuff but you know if you are one who like to clean out stuff the library is probably not the place where you you know, you will be very happy because the library is always dusty, you know, and, uh, you know, so just very, very simple like that, okay? And there's a little one over there. And so what I'm going to do is use some burn number and strengthen the line over here a little bit. Okay, strengthen some of the line over there, here and there, okay? And, uh, you know, the library will be a hard place because if you wanted to everything clean, spick and span, you know, library just are not very conducive to that, right? And you, if you, the way you keep the library very, very clean is by getting rid of the books, you know, then it's kind of strange, right? You, you know, I don't know if you agree, you know, that's my rent. You know, library need to be, you know, old. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it just it just is that way, you know, because it is old and it is, you know, books are, books are not the books collect dust, right? And if um, people that come in the library like me, is gonna put up with the dust, then don't worry about the dust. You know, we have um, a member of our church when we were in uh, New Jersey. He, he, uh, he said, "Oh my gosh, I'm just." <laughs> Okay, I'm darkening that area a little bit, okay? Because it still is important to get that area darkened so you can see mushroom, okay? And so what we were talking about uh, putting in the line, but uh, yeah, this friend of ours in the church, and he worked in the Princeton Library, and he said, uh, wow, I, I'm very <laughs> allergic. <laughs> I have to take an antihistamine to go in there, you know, because they have, they have rows and rows of books, right, in there. And so, okay, now, let's, um, so now we're gonna just do, um, we're gonna put a wash of, um, green over here, 
okay so that we can have some green and I'm going to do this uh, leaf over there maybe a little bit more detail so if we're doing the wash let's just uh, go in here okay so what I'm going to do is use my green color okay that's the set green okay and then I'm going to mix it with some of the uh, perline green I, I hope that's perline green and sap green but more perline than sap okay and then over here I'm hoping that this is a dry this is dry right okay so I'm gonna I'm just dropping in the color I'm dropping in the color and the color can come down here you see why okay just dropping in the color and then what I'm gonna do is clean the brush okay clean the brush dry it but you know you can't get the brush totally dry you know to be honest and I'm going to just let the color come out here don't go into the burn umber. Remember, I uh, explained to you the burn umber likes to come out. They just like to escape. <laughs> so in this painting, we need to be a little bit uh, careful, okay? Now, okay, so I'm working this, right? And so I tell myself, okay, this is like totally experience, okay? I'm going to drop some sap, some more sap green while this is still wet, okay? Over here. And then I'm going to let the green actually come in that area and then I pick up a little bit pick up a little bit of perlin green okay and let the color just mix on the on the palette okay and then I'm going to just why is that because I'm going to come in here and use that as my um, palette to uh, you know to uh, uh, to put uh, leaves on there okay and then well I'm gonna go clean the brush okay and then pick up this quinacridone burn orange with that red remember we put that over there and uh, we're gonna s start dropping the color over here and so now if you um, like to guess <laughs> what I'm trying to do is I'm going to do some fall leaf down here okay or a suggestion of it actually if you um, you know are more uh, seasoned uh, or you know uh, artist that doesn't worry about things too much this you know is probably just enough but I'm an artist that worry about things a little bit, so I'm getting some burn umber, and I will actually do some leaves down here, okay? When this is dry, okay? Now, isn't that isn't that pretty? Because you know, like you see the contrast of the color, right? And I'm going back to the green again, to that little bit of green, and then I'm gonna put it here. All this while it's still kind of wet. Just take care that in between the burn umber and the green color don't let it mix too much okay and then I'm going to go back to the burn um quinacodon burn orange with that little red and I'm going to you know just just put a little bit more brilliant color because you know that's inspiration of nature right uh, because of the, all the color that are out there right now you can even put um oh yeah put the, this green this yellow color because that's the color of the aspen okay uh, we can put a little bit of that in there, okay? And then uh, we'll keep going here okay, as we talk. And uh, we're gonna have that green sepia with a little bit of, uh, you know, and suddenly, suddenly you can see that, oh, she just outlined the, she just do an outline on the, on the mushroom, right? The, you can, using the background to outline the mushroom so the mushroom will show up now we, we're not gonna never going to leave it like that you know so clean the brush and pull this color out okay pull it out a little bit pull it around this is like just uh, one of the painting that we need to be uh, a little bit careful because of the the nature of the burn umber okay um, yeah with watercolor we just have to we just have to work with what we have okay but if a little color come in here that's fine too because then the nature is like that, right? In nature, the color spread. Okay, just kind of pull. Now I can see that this is a big puddle, okay? So I need to be extra careful. But if you didn't create a big puddle like me, then you don't have to be too worried about this, okay? Now, so um, I would like to put some of these red over there. Um, this might not be a, be a good time, but I'm just gonna be brave and drop some orange in there. <laughs> you you see that I do things like that, right? I always do things like that. And uh, okay, so back to the green. I don't have to show you this time again. And then we're gonna do something over here, okay? Do something over here. 
And then we will use the background green color to outline this mushroom right here. See? It suddenly, suddenly it's just show up and say hello. You know, um, the more we go and look at art, you know, either at museum or library, you know, which I do all of them, the above, you know, and then uh, now this, I don't want it to be such harsh line, okay? This is just a background, so I come in and soften it, okay? And then you see what I want to do with that in a minute. You know, the more we develop very, very good taste, you know, for art, right? And like I say, my husband, uh, mom, also, they, they like to go to the museum. They've been all over the world because that's where they work. Um, when they were young, they work in Saudi Arabia. And uh, let's do some burn number over here, okay? Because the, the ground is always kind of muddy, decay, you know, kind of things, right? And so they, they have very, very good... Um, they've seen a lot of things. My husband's mom is actually do oil painting too. She did that when she was young, cause she, when she had a friend and she take a class. But then, um, she, you know, she somehow she decided to just just kind of drop it. It was sad for my father-in-law and everybody involved. You know, I have her painting in our house too. She always wanted to get back in, and then she didn't. She never did get back into her painting, and uh, that was. Uh, a little sad for everyone, really seriously. Okay, now I'm going to do that that one, okay? So uh, that uh, little leaves over here, you know, because that's the composition, okay? And so what I'm going to do is uh, just um, use four color, okay? So this is my kind of four color palette, okay? And uh, since this is not the mushroom, the focal point should be over here. So uh, let's get some sepia and get the line a little bit more this thing over here, okay? Because I, since it's, this is the focal mushroom, it really needs to, you know, have a little bit more detail, a little bit. Okay, and now I have a clean brush and just kind of, wow, you can see how hard we are on brushes, right? But that's okay. That really is okay because you know why? You know, you uh, use the brush, okay? Because we don't want to baby the brush, right? We use the brush to accomplish what we want it to accomplish. Okay, now I'm going to just kind of drop color on this leaf, okay? Because it's orange, so Koneka don't burn orange, maybe a little bit red, okay? And then I'm going to put that color in, in there. Put that pigment in. Now, uh, please bear with us that you always know that little brush had a hard time picking up things, okay? Because there's not, just not that many hair in there. And then we use a clean brush and then pull this out. Isn't that brilliantly beautiful? And it, you know, it will carry the color. You know, see, I'm going to put some of the color over there so it become very consistent. And then you say, you know, you say, wow, that's a really pretty color. But Kathy, it's never... Uh, I'm going to go get some burn number. Kathy is never content. Okay, so I'm going to put some burn number over here. Okay, so this is our four kind of, uh, uh, kind of, um, fallish and, uh, leaf. Uh, everything is changing color, but it's changing for brilliant because they say that in Utah because this year we have so much um, Same thing. Okay, when I got to burn orange with a little bit of red, you can hardly see the red You can see that uh, when I'm picking this up. This is very dry. Okay You know and I can actually go in and with some uh, green light green cadmium yellow light and put some over there To close up the do you do you just love it? Because this is our our expression of our fall, right? So fall is a very, very nice color. But Kathy always wanted to use some darker area over here. Just drop a little bit of burn umber while it's wet, okay? Um, so we're going to do the, all five of those leaves. It's just so fun. It's just so fun to go hiking right now, you know, because you can just... I'm going to wet that area a little bit. And then let the just let the color mix in here, okay? You can do that. But uh, what I you know I want to discourage you is just to mix, uh, to just go in and mix, 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 and have a have a 
you know have a area of uh, color that uh, you can use because that's just um, not something that I like you know the result okay um, and uh, when you go out it's just very very refreshing you know at this time to go see the color of nature our master painter which is our God you know created nature to be very very beautiful for us to enjoy and it doesn't last very long but we will so we will just take advantage of it you know while we can i don't know you know of course you guys come from all the different area of the world right if you get to see color like that or you you get i'm sure that there are places that have uh, even more vibrant color than utah right of course you know i love utah you know, because, uh, you know, it's my home and I, I really enjoy the fall. We have a big mountain over here and it in the fall, it just changes color. You can see I'm just like kind of connecting the, you know, with this burnt umber that I just put here, you know. And so the the leaf that I, the, yeah, that I'm just painting. Oh, you know what we can do? Let's put some green in it because that's nice. Okay, you know, so just like because uh, you're like they're holding on to the little last bit of the green color, not willing to give it up. Okay, uh, you know, you after a hike, you, you know, you come out so refreshed, and your eye feeds upon all this beautiful color. It's not, you know, so uh, I know that not everyone can go on hikes, you know, but you know, just uh, go out and find them, find those colorful area and see if you can be lucky enough now clean brush okay just pull this color out okay and then you can put in a little bit of uh, sap green over here to make it pretty okay now <laughs> i i know that i i love you know this is my only place right right there and so um to ju just have a full leaves there and so i put the detail there you know maybe a little much okay now over here you can just take a very uh nice uh, little fine line pencil okay and then you can draw leaves over here okay just here and there one or two you know don't um, don't put in a lot and then we will negative paint it okay so what I'm going to mean is you know so we have leaf shape right there right and all these like so don't worry okay it will be available to you when you go to my blog sunset peony okay and I'm going to outline the leaf okay outline the leaf as if the leaf has fallen into some mud, okay? And then I'm going to pull this, like soften this color, okay? Right here, okay? And then at this point, you can well, you can drop, you can drop burnt umber on it in this like little puddle that we just created under the leaves, okay? Drop some color in, and then you will, in a minute, you see the leaf, okay? And if this is still wet, and then you can even drop some perlene green maybe over here, okay? And that will give you the, you know, the illusion. Now we're coming into this, okay? So I'm just using some perlene green and connect the, connect the two things, okay? So that's what we call negative painting, right? And over here, you can actually use Pinacodon Burn Orange, you know, and drop some color over here, or even just paint the leaves in suggestion that there is a leaf here, okay? Isn't that fun? Now I'm going to use some uh, cadmium yellow uh, to outline the top part of the leaf, okay? And then while it's there, I'm going to put some sap green on it. And this is how fall is, uh, is portray portrayed, you know, we are mixing in all the color. And so can you see that there's a little leaf shape over there? Okay, so I'm gonna do another one, okay? Just use some perlene green maybe and and negative paint the bottom part where the leaf have fallen, okay? All right, and then I'm going to put some Quinacodon Burn Orange just to lighten this area up a little bit, give it some life and use some uh, sap green maybe and do the top part of the outline of the leaf okay so now what you can see is uh, there is one leaf here there's two leaf here and then we're gonna finish this third leaf okay so the same thing we can use a uh, burnt umber 
and uh, do the bottom part okay now rem take care that you remember that there's a stem okay over here so don't like I mean don't you know don't lose your stem we work very hard to keep it cute right okay and so you can see that the the forest floor is kind of um, you know muddy which is the truth but even if it is the truth we still want to make it kind of pretty okay and then let's just take some uh, sap green and paint another leaf over here okay just a leaf shape a suggestion that oh there's another leaf over there isn't that fun do you guys are you guys uh, having fun okay and so do the same thing over here okay the uh, top side of that leaf that we have uh, use the pencil to uh, to draw okay and so you can see that's one leaf two leaf three leaf four and five okay and that's like uh, pretty much enough and we're gonna we're gonna either okay we'll just do it now okay use uh, some sepia on this uh, zero brush that we use uh, so good to us okay and you can just kind of gently put some leaf vein in there okay and put some, put some vein in here you see that so they're coming alive to us okay but um, do not uh, make it too sharp the line because we don't want sharp line so just uh, use a clean brush and just with a very light touch okay go in and soften the line that you just put on okay so that it's not you know you can see it oh wow it's there it's there and so over here what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put some kind of forest bottom with the paint uh, with the perlene green okay we're gonna come in here and put some leaves coming out or whatever these things is called that exist in forest okay isn't that fun are you guys having fun we're almost done okay and then we'll soften that a little bit not too harsh okay we don't want the line to be too harsh we just want you to see it but not harsh line okay we can actually do negative painting, but in the in the pushing of time over here right now, okay, we don't have time to do more negative painting like that, you know, on area like what we're doing now, okay? So we're gonna do our best and just have some leaf coming out here and there, okay? And just remember that you do have a have a stem over here and don't overstep into that, but a little bit is okay. Okay, and so this area is like super dark, right? So we need to go back to our indigo and have some indigo and drop in the color in here, okay? So that we keep up with the image that we're, we're the mushroom area is super dark, okay? Ah, this is so fun. I hope you guys would do this because it's just so much fun to be able to um, just, you know, do some fall and bring some fall into your life and into your mind, right? And uh, it's just, you know, very, very good for us. And I will do the red mushroom, hopefully, this year. If not, then it will be next year. You know, it's like with me, it's very, very hard to tell. You know, it all depends on inspiration. But I think I'll do a red mushroom. Do you know that? Well, you know, when you get this book, and sometimes it's, it's from England, uh, from Italy, then I won't be able to read it. But if it is from England, then I will know. Now, let's do a little bit more over here in this area, okay? Mm, no, we don't really have time, but we will do it, okay? We will just do, how about a, a, a four leaf right there, okay? Lie in there. Yeah, and that's all I'm gonna do, okay? Let's uh, put some, let's do perlene green. You can do perlene green, you can do indigo, okay? Whatever you fancy is fine, okay, for now, for this area, because this is the background, okay? But just use color that you have used uh, during your whole painting. Like I'm going to put some burnt umber in here now, okay? And uh, and then I will come and lighten it up with a little bit of quinacridone burnt orange, okay? Just so that fall is so consistent, right? And just maybe paint a leaf over here, coming out, okay? Oh, have fun, have fun. I hope you guys are having fun too, okay? Just so much fun. And then I will go in. Uh, I just use paint screw, uh, perlene green and do the line of the fallen leaf, okay? And don't leave it so sharp. So we come in and soften it up, okay? And then I'm, I need to do a little bit on the top. Let's use quinacridone burn orange, the top part of that leaf, you know, so that you can see the leaf, you know, more clearly, right? 
okay like that so there's another leaf over there very very fine and easy okay now so i'm looking at my painting and see did i do everything that i wanted to do you know okay this is very fun it looks like the bite has been taken out and there's a little bite taken out there's a little bite taken out okay and this is our and so now i'm going to i can use my good old trusty you know uh what is this called happy dot okay so i'm going to just go in here and do a wash okay and so let's start with the perline green mixed with uh, some sap green maybe you know on the brush and then just take care a little bit around the burn umber, okay? But, oh, by the way, if the burn umber want to come out at this point, you know, lift it out, that's fine. Because we are mixing it with the background, so it's fine, okay? And so that suggests that there's greenery behind it, and so we put some more sap green on there while it's still wet. And we put some paint gray because that's what we have been using and we haven't done that in the background. Okay. All right. Now, if this area wanted to, you know, mingle in there, it's fine. And Quinacridone Burn Orange, how's that? Okay, that will be suggestion that there are more leaves like this on this side, all right? And if you uh, really want to, you can even just uh, suggest it. Now, how do you suggest that I'm going to show you right now, okay? You just use uh, maybe a thinner brush, you know, just uh, kind of do this, okay? Oh, okay. That means your, your mind will suddenly connect this to this, right? And so if we want it to be consistent, then we can put some... Uh, that yellow color, you know, and let it mix into that and put some yellow color and mix into that. Okay, you see that? It's kind of a, like a fussy suggestion. This needs to be a little bit cleaner, okay? Like, like that, okay? Like a little bit of suggestion and, uh, okay, let's go, go back to a happy dot and uh, do some perline green, just a light wash and uh, keep going on this side, okay? So that it is the background, you know, but nothing Nothing to stress now. Every one of the, the harder part is done, okay? And I just pick up some indigo to drop in here to make that this area like a little bit darker, okay? We have been using indigo. It's in there. It's also in there. It's also in there. <laughs> and so I just kind of like to bring it back, you know, so that we can... And so I wanted a, a little green wash over here too, okay? And then we will say goodbye. I look like Kathy is very heavy-handed, but I'm going to, you know, make that into a light wash, okay? And just meanwhile, just be very careful about the stem and don't let us uh, lose the shape, okay, of what we've been painting, right? Okay, you see? And if this color decide to go into the, um, go into this leaf, it doesn't even bother me. Just let it because the background is not always like that clear, okay? So some, some sap green and drop it in there while we're doing that, while we're going down the the background of the painting. I know every one of you say that, oh, please don't um, stop because of time, you know, and I'm going to try my best not to, I, I do understand, okay? I really do understand. And, uh, but sometimes, you know, you know, like I've explained that a lot with you guys, you know, sometimes the 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 chance of, um, you know, of uh, the computer uh, not wanting to upload the video because it's too long, it's always lurking in my mind. I don't like it, but it happens. Okay, just some brown here so that we don't forget the forest floor is brownish. Okay, so a light, light touch of green over here, okay? light just a little bit light touch so that as to suggest that this is not the only leaf that's next to the mushroom okay and we need to be a little bit more consistent over here okay because there's green here of course there's green on the other side of the leaf you know we can't just uh, <laughs> do green and then orange or something you know okay and then when this is dry I'm going to show you that now when this is dry you just use uh, some either burn umber or quinacridone burn orange and come over here and re-establish 
this line right there, okay? Because we work hard to do that. And sometimes when you're doing the background wash, it's very normal that it will be disappear ring from your eye. But, you know, we, we can always recover it. Okay, so that is the indigo that I was talking about. Actually, it, it might be royal blue, but it could be indigo. But just use indigo if you guys have indigo. Because sometimes, you know, my color are right next to each other, and I'm not quite sure why they are um, kind of bright, you know. And So I have to go in and say, hey, you know, am I actually using royal blue or indigo? Okay, and then a little bit more of that pink gray color, okay, to darken this area. So it's consistent with that side, okay? With the mushroom on that side. All right. And so that's it. What do you guys think? I hope you will do one. And it's very fun. And hopefully we will get you a red, red cat mushroom for Merry Christmas, you know, uh, greeting. And um, okay, that is our pink thing. I might drop some color on here and there. I might not. I, I will just see, you know, don't want it to be too busy. But anyway, okay, if I change anything, I would of course tell you guys in the in the intro okay and uh, thank you so much for painting along i'll see you next time love all of you